This video was made possible by CuriosityStream. When you sign up at the link in the description, you'll also get access to Nebula, the streaming video platform that HAI is a part of. Hello everyone, and welcome to a half as interesting episode where we'll be doing something a little different, talking about planes. Now listen up, because this episode is serious. I'm not playing around, except for that one pun, which helps me keep a uh, flight tone. Okay, I'll stop now. Any more puns and I'll seem like a real cockpit. To understand what you're about to hear, we need to talk a bit about the history of planes. Planes are flat, two-dimensional geometric surfaces that were first described by the Greek mathematician Euclid around 300 BC in his seminal text, Element. Oh, you know what, sorry, I'm just now realizing that that's the wrong type of plane. Classic mistake, sorry about that guys, I'm just a little bit out of my comfort zone with this whole planes thing. Let me try again. The first successful airplane flight was in 1903, but it wasn't until after World War II in the 1950s that planes really, you know, took off. Which means that an airplane in 1926, when our story takes place, was like a man bun in 2007. There were a few people who had them, but they were far from widespread. And with that in mind, let's begin. In 1926, a man named William McBoyle hired a pilot to steal a Waco airplane in Ottawa, Illinois and fly it to Goumont, Oklahoma. After the plane had been stolen, McBoyle then instructed the pilot to take a similar airplane that McBoyle actually owned and swap it with the stolen airplane to try to confuse the police. The pilots attempted to do that, but crashed, probably because planes in 1926, again like man buns, sucked. So, much like the owner of a man bun should be, McBoyle and the pilot were arrested, and McBoyle was convicted in federal court of violating the National Motor Vehicle Theft Act. Specifically, he was convicted of Section 3 of the Act, which outlaws, quote, transporting or causing to be transported in interstate or foreign commerce a motor vehicle, knowing that same to have been stolen. After he was convicted, McBoyle's lawyers filed an appeal, in which, in a truly galaxy brain level argument, they claimed not that their client didn't steal the airplane, not that he didn't take it across state lines, but that he had done both those things, yet it didn't matter because an airplane isn't a motor vehicle. The appeals court said they were wrong, and so the lawyers appealed to a group of out of touch old people wearing robes. No, not that one, this one. The Supreme Court miraculously not only took the case, but said that they agreed. Writing for the majority, Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes claimed that, quote, in everyday speech, vehicle calls up the picture of a thing moving on land, and in his conclusion, said that Congress probably meant to include airplanes somewhere in their law, but, possibly because airplanes were still pretty new, it seemed they had forgotten. He wrote, quote, the statute should not be extended to aircraft simply because it may seem to us that a similar policy applies, or upon the speculation that, if the legislator had thought of it, very likely broader words would have been used. And so, the newly crowned Lord of Loopholes, William McBoyle, went free. So, I guess the moral of the video is, find a new invention, like fidget spinners, and steal as many of them as possible before Congress makes a law about it. Yep, that seems like it definitely won't backfire. Alright, bye! Whoa, whoa, whoa there, Sam, not so fast. Oh, hello, Devin from Legal Eagle. What are you doing here, and how can you hear me? Well, Sam, I'm here because I'm your lawyer, and I can hear you because I bugged your office to make sure that you weren't doing anything illegal. Wait, but isn't bugging my office illegal? Uh, you know, Sam, why don't you leave the lawyering to me? That's what you pay me for. I don't remember ever agreeing to pay you. Well, Sam, if that were true, how do you explain the jet ski I just bought with 10% of your ad revenue? Um, I, I, you know what, let's just talk about this later. The point is, I still don't understand why you're in my video. Well, Sam, I'm here because you just gave your audience some incredibly bad legal advice. You see, William McBoyle did break the law, just not federal law, which is what he was initially convicted of. Stealing anything is illegal, whether it's a wallet or a plane or 10% of someone's ad revenue. But the generic law that says you can't steal stuff is a state law, not a federal one. The reason is that federal law only covers the stuff that the Constitution allows and the Congress has actually gotten around to addressing. Everything else is left to the states. They have what's called plenary authority. But back in the 1920s, Congress was preoccupied with 100% following prohibition, that they hadn't gotten around to making a plane stealing law. So there was no federal law for McBoyle to be charged under. By the way, this is a great example of a canon of construction or theory of statutory interpretation called a eustem generis, which means of the same kind or class. The law here mentioned other kinds of transport and could have mentioned aircraft, but it didn't. So rightly or wrongly, we assume that legislators actually know what they're doing when they draft laws, even if those laws do something dumb like forget planes exist. If the statute of limitations hadn't run, McBoyle could have been convicted under 
grand larceny in Illinois, because there's no such thing as a free plane. But there is such thing as a free subscription to Nebula, which is exactly what you'll get when you sign up for CuriosityStream. CuriosityStream is, of course, the documentary streaming service with thousands of top-quality films, including originals by people like Jane Goodall, David Attenborough, and even Stephen Hawking, and Nebula is the streaming service started by all your favorite educational creators – CTP Grey, Minute Physics, me, even Devin from Legal Eagle, who you might remember from, you know, 30 seconds ago. Because we figured that people who like documentaries might also like the stuff we make, we came together to offer a great deal. When you sign up for an annual subscription to CuriosityStream, which is only $20 a year, you'll also get a free annual subscription to Nebula. All you have to do is go to curiositystream.com/hii and sign up to any one of their subscriptions.